Today on Israel Hayom Insider. Simultaneous shooting and suicide bombing attacks at five locations around Paris leave 129 dead and more than 400 injured. ISIS claims responsibility. French President Francois Hollande calls the attacks an act of war, announces a state of emergency, and vows a merciless response. With me in the studio to discuss the situation, columnist Judith Bergman. Hi, Steve. Hi, Judith. I'm Steve Gannot. So, Judith, um, when the Charlie Hebdo attacks uh, happened in January, we asked on this show whether France understands the situation that it's in. Does it understand now? Well, Francois Hollande has declared war mm -hmm. against ISIS. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time, I think, uh, during the past 14 years that we've heard uh, a European leader uh, actually be explicit about uh, who the enemy is. Because we had, uh, in Europe, we had Madrid, yeah. and we had... Um, Madrid was even bigger than this attack. Madrid was even bigger because 191 people were killed and around 2,000 people were wounded. And uh, both after Madrid and after the bombings against the London transportation system in 2005, which mm -hmm. was less in casualties but could have potentially been huge, mm -hmm. um, no one, no European leader was willing to declare that this was uh, a war against radical Islam. Mm -hmm. um, Hollande at least has uh, pinpointed that the, uh, the enemy here is ISIS and that he intends to do something about it. Now, whether Europe as such and whether France indeed in yeah. particular has learned um, a lesson here and whether they really understand what's at stake, we will see in the coming uh, weeks and months and indeed years. Mm -hmm. Because um, the issue here is not only um, whether we will bomb the living daylights out of ISIS in Syria and Iraq. The issue here is that uh, there are potentially thousands of ISIS operatives on European soil already. Thousands? That is what ISIS claims, at least. Okay. They claim that they have smuggled 4,000 ISIS operatives into Europe. Now, whether that is true or not, is, is, is perhaps even irrelevant because four, at least four of the terrorists in the Paris attacks were homegrown, yeah. which shows that in the end it's not relevant whether they're imported or not. The, right. the homegrowns are also willing to perpetrate this kind of terrorism. Right, and hundreds of, of Frenchmen have, and women have gone to Syria to fight in the war. Hundreds have come back. Um, more are on the way. It yes. seems like there's a revolving door there where they're going, getting, getting training, um, being radicalized, and, and coming back to France. There is, a, there is a revolving door in all of Europe, because all of Europe has contributed uh, nationals fighting uh, with ISIS in Syria, mm. and Europe has not found a uniform response to uh, what to do with these people once they return. Yeah. There has been a lot of discussion, but in, in some countries, for instance in Scandinavia, the view has been, you know, give them jobs and... Um, Right. Shower well, them with love and everything will be fine. This is not the case. Well, I think part of the response, part of Hollande's response, he said was to, um, he wants to amend the French Constitution. And I believe it's to take away the citizenship of people that have gone. Yes. And yes. so that could be a very different situation. And that could, that could stop people yes. from coming back, at least. Yes, because if you come back and you're then granted uh, social, social help and a, and, a, and a flat and education, then what's the incentive to, to yeah. not, not to go? Right. Right. Now, on Monday, I believe, um, it was announced, the French uh, military announced that they had sent 10 planes to do, drop 20 bombs on command centers, recruitment centers in Raqqa. Yes. I noticed this morning, we're taping this on Tuesday, this morning, exactly the same announcement. Yes, last night, 10, uh, 10 planes, I think 20 bombs, recruitment centers, command centers. What's going on here? Is this, uh, is this a real response? Is this for PR, window dressing? What do you think? Well, that's the thing. Um, France, has, France has been part of the coalition against ISIS for a year already, mm -hmm. but uh, their, their, um, their uh, bombings have been uh, sort of reserved for Iraq, not so much for Syria because of Assad. Yeah. Um, Syria, I think, since September, right? They've been yes, mm -hmm. yes, and and um, look, dropping twenty bombs is a symbolic gesture in itself. Well, we don't know. I don't. I don't know if these are big bombs, no. little bombs. Um, no, but um, 
the the whole the whole the whole effort mm -hmm. of, of of the coalition against ISIS in, in 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 Syria and Iraq has been characterized by most observers as a very half-hearted one. Yeah. Some have called um, Obama's strategy their photo op. Right. photo op war, right. simply making a point uh, to satisfy a, a public desire to do something, mm. but not actually changing things on the ground. So I want to get to Obama's, uh, Obama's strategy. Uh, he announced, I, I think yesterday, that the strategy is not going to change. The American strategy is not going to change. And uh, he regards the attack in Paris as a setback. And he's still not willing to call it Islamic, radical Islamic terrorism or something, anything like that. It's, it's terrorism but not really willing to name the enemy, it seems. Uh, aside from saying ISIS, yes, it's, it's ISIS. Yes. Um, if the United States was willing uh, to, to change its strategy, or if uh, maybe after Obama, a new administration comes in with a new strategy, what are the options? And what's, what's, what are the options um, in theory? And then what's politically viable? Yeah. Well, there are, there are a few options, at least in theory. There are those observers right now who are calling for uh, an, a sort of Article 5 uh, operation. What they're referring to is NATO's Article 5. After 9-11, uh, the U.S., George Bush, invoked uh, Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, which states that an attack on one NATO member mm -hmm. is, should be viewed as an attack on every... Uh, on all on, of NATO. Oh, uh, yes. It's a sort of... Uh, Solidarity, a collective uh, defense. That exactly, sort of thing. Yeah. and that was uh, that was uh, that was one of the grounds that he used for Operation Enduring Freedom, which started in Afghanistan in October mm -hmm. of 2001. Um, there are those who are advocating massive, uh, massive uh, boots on the ground, uh, a stepping up of the robustness of the bombing campaign. Mm -hmm. um, but the, you don't have to go all in. There are other options than sending in U.S. and Allied troops back mm -hmm. into Iraq, mm -hmm. and for the first time would, would be in Syria. Um, another option is to arm the Kurds. Uh, yeah. The Kurds right now are the boots on the ground, um, but Obama is not arming the Kurds because uh, for political reasons, Turkey is also part of the uh, alliance. Mm -hmm. um, that would be another option because prob many, many, many U.S., um, probably many U.S. presidential candidates will be reluctant to advocate new uh, uh, Military commitments. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, after having done Afghanistan and Iraq and having yeah. withdrawn. Uh, but as a matter of fact, uh, the U.S. did send, uh, in October, I believe, 50 special operation forces into uh, the area mm -hmm. where they are cooperating on the ground with Kurds. Mm -hmm. The Kurds recently retook Sinjar in yeah. Iraq. Uh, could, could that be, could um, sending special forces, could that be uh, the extent of boots on the ground and for a successful operation, or do you need more than that? It seems like that's very pinpointed. I don't, I don't know. Well, the thing is that ISIS now, now controls a really, a, a, a quite a large area where they have obscured the, mm -hmm. the border between Syria and Iraq. And Iraq. Yeah. Um, whether, I doubt personally that special 50 special operations forces are yeah. going to be able to do anything. I believe that the the, the 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 local Syrians that the U.S. were training, I, I believe that uh, the U.S. has withdrawn their financial support of them. So that's also not a great signal to be sending at this point in time. But the question is whether the the other Sunni Arab states in the area are willing mm. uh, to go in and mm -hmm. do something. It's a very complex situation. You're talking on about the Jordan. You're talking about Saudi Arabia. Exactly, and uh, Egypt. Yes, mm -hmm. they are already involved to some extent, but it, mm -hmm. but. If boots were to be put on the ground, it would be natural for those countries to step up, but they would need a solid backing from right. the and West. And then they're going to run into problems because because Russia's backing exactly uh, Russia's backing Assad yes. and Iran's backing Assad. Yes. Um, one one final question. Uh, originally, we, we had planned for this show to not be about this at all, to be about the uh, European the EU labeling plan yes. to label products of the, from the West Bank differently from products. From Israel, yes. they wouldn't say "made in Israel." Yes. And you, you and I had a lot of discussions about this. We disagree about uh, about that plan. Um, maybe we'll talk about it on a future show because it is interesting. But right now, at this moment, it seems what strikes me is that it seems so irrelevant. Yes, you know, it's such a bureaucratic. Um, it's like bureaucratic minutia dealing with the labels that don't, probably most people don't even look at. Um, they're not talking about boycotting these West Bank products. Um, is this some is this indicative of of the problem in Europe? It seems to me like 
you know, Europe is paying attention to um, how Israel labels various products and not about securing the streets of, of Europe, of Paris, and, and, uh, and of what's going on in Syria, which is much, much larger than the, Arab -Israeli con than the entire Arab-Israeli conflict. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's uh, what is what is indicative of this attitude is mm -hmm. that the Swedish foreign minister went out and said that the, these attacks yeah. happened because of uh, occupation of Palestine. This is right. very indicative. Because the Palestinians have no hope, so that's why ISIS is attacking Paris. Makes a lot of sense, right? Exactly. And but 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 also to to mm -hmm. to emphasize um, the European the the European Council of the EU were mm -hmm. uh, about to have a meeting uh, right after these attacks happened and. On the top of the agenda mm. is the Middle East peace process, believe it or not. Which doesn't mean Syria. No. It means us. It always means, it. Al when it says Middle East peace, mm -hmm. it's always Israel. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. Well, Judith Bergman, thank you very much. Thank I hope you. to have you back and we'll discuss that labeling issue, which is interesting, but it's really not the, uh, it should not be, I think, the top priority right now. Definitely not. And we'll have to see what happens with, uh, you know, with uh, the attacks in, in France and um, whether it, whether the EU and, and the United States, the West in general, um, knows what to do and how to confront this, this terrible um, situation. Uh, I want to thank our guests for continuing to watch us and uh, continuing to send us your um, feedback, which we love to get, and we will see you next time.